What's going on? It's Sook and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the MacSpec M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. Also be sure to subscribe as we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. And of course I will be showcasing what it's like to play a handful of games on this MacBook Pro. So be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when that video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, this 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro has a 12 core CPU, an 18 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, along with four, along with four terabytes of SSD based storage. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was an older version of Geekbench, Geekbench 4. So Geekbench 4 should give us a good baseline to compare to other MacBook Pro models from years past. So when running Geekbench 4, I got a single core score of 7,690 with a multi-core score of 42,486. I then ran the compute test from Geekbench 4. Now when running the OpenCL compute test, I got scores of 196,991 with metal scores of 149,568. I then ran a slightly newer version of Geekbench, Geekbench 5. And when running the CPU test from Geekbench 5, I got single core scores of 1734 with multi core scores of 11132. I then ran the compute test from Geekbench 5, starting off with the OpenCL test. I got scores of 48,676 with metal scores of 53,538. I then ran the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6. And when running the CPU test, I got single core scores of 3,117 with multi core scores of 14,940. I then ran the compute test from Geekbench 6 and when running the OpenCL tests, I got scores of 50,623 and when running the metal test, I got scores of 78,390. So I wanted to further test how this CPU would perform under load. So I ran a number of different Cinebench versions and when starting off with Cinebench R20, I got scores of 3,798 and when running a slightly newer version of Cinebench, Cinebench R23, I got single core scores of 1,877 with multi core scores of 14,176, which gives us a ratio of 7.55. And as we've seen with previous tests, the higher the ratio, the better the performing CPU. So I then ran Cinebench's latest version, Cinebench 2024. And when running this test, I got single core scores of 138, along with multi core scores of 1044, which indeed in this test gives us a ratio of 7.54. I then ran the GPU test from Cinebench 2024 and when running this test I got a score of 6372. I wanted to further test this 18 core GPU in the M3 Pro. So I ran a number of different tests from 3D Mark and when starting off with the wildlife test, as we've seen previously, it was a little useless as it managed to max the score on this test with it also scoring an average of 120 frames per second. And so I then decided to run the wildlife stress test and when running this test, the best score I got was 20,040 and the lowest I got was 20,031, which is showing that this chip is still being cooled quite well. The next test I ran was the wildlife extreme test and when running this I got a score of 14,241 with an average frame rate of 85.3 frames per second. I then ran the wildlife extreme stress test and when running this test the highest score I got was 14,287 and the lowest this MacBook scored was 14,222 which further shows that this MacBook Pro is once again being cooled quite well. 
Introduced with the M3 lineup of chips was the ray tracing capabilities. And when running the Solar Bay ray tracing test, I got a score of 22,404 with an average frame rate of 85.2 frames per second. And when running the Solar Bay stress test, the highest score I got was 22,370, and the lowest this MacBook scored was 22,320. So I wanted to further test the GPU in this MacBook Pro, so I then ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests, which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity, which are run both on and off screen. So in the interest of saving some time, I have calculated the average between the higher and lower intensity tasks. But as always, I will show you the results for each individual test. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 390.77 frames per second. Whereas for the lower intensive tasks, I got an average of 381.71 frames per second. I then wanted to thoroughly test the SSD's performance in this MacBook Pro. So I loaded almost 2.2 terabytes worth of files into the MacBook Pro and then ran a number of disk speed tests to see how this MacBook would perform with most of its storage taken. So when running the Aja disk speed test, I got write speeds of 7,330 megabytes per second and read speeds of 4,371 megabytes per second. When running the Blackmagic disk speed test, once again, with those 2.2 terabytes worth of files in this MacBook Pro's four terabyte SSD, I then got write speeds of 7,214.5 megabytes per second with read speeds of 5,269 0.5 megabytes per second. I then restored this MacBook's SSD and as you can see there is 21.55 gigabytes of storage taken in this 4 terabyte SSD. And now when running the Blackmagic disk speed test, I got write speeds of 7,109.3 megabytes per second with read speeds of 4,987.7 megabytes per second. And when running the Aja disk speed test, I got write speeds of 7,246 megabytes per second with read speeds of 4 4,411 megabytes per second. I then tested this MacBook Pro's networking capabilities and got download speeds of 145 megabits per second and upload speeds of 92.7 megabits per second. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the CPU, the GPU, the system memory, along with the storage. So when running this test, I got a score of 2,958. I then ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 9,565. And when running the Antuti HTML5 browser benchmark, I got scores of 92,156. And when running Speedometer 2.0, I got scores of 607. I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Now I ran it at a number of different resolutions with a number of different graphic settings. And starting off with the native resolution of this MacBook Pro display, that's 3024 by 1964. And when keeping the graphic settings to high, it rendered 4,444 frames, with it averaging 28 frames per second. And when keeping the resolution the same, but lowering the graphic settings to medium, it rendered 4,590 frames with it averaging 29 frames per second. I then lowered the resolution to 2560 by 1600 and when keeping the graphic settings high it this time managed to render 6032 frames with it averaging 38 frames per second. And when keeping the resolution to 2560 by 1600 but lowering the graphics details down to medium it rendered 6263 frames with it now averaging 39 frames per second i once again lowered the resolution this time down to 1920 by 1200 and when keeping the graphic settings to high it this time rendered 8814 frames with it now averaging 56 frames per second and when lowering the graphic settings to medium, it this time rendered 9,211 frames, with it now averaging 58 frames per second. And finally, when lowering the resolution down to 1200 by 854 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it this time rendered 14,259 frames, with it averaging 91 frames per second. And when keeping the resolution the same but dropping the graphic settings to medium, it this time rendered 15,072 frames, with it averaging 96 frames per second. 
I then ran a timed video export using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off of a 5 minute 24 second video file to H.264. And when exporting the full HD project, it took 42 seconds to export. And when exporting the 4K project, it took 2 minutes and 33 seconds to complete. So I once again wanted to see how this MacBook Pro's GPU would perform. So I ran the Heaven and Valley test from Unigen benchmarking tools. And when running the Heaven benchmark at 1515 by 982, I got a score of 3649 with an average frame rate of 114.9 frames per second. And once the resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900, I got a score of 3801 with an average frame rate of 150.9 frames per second. And when running the valley test, starting off with the resolution of 1515 by 982, I got a score of 4961 with an average frame rate of 118.6 frames per second. And when running the valley test at 1440 by 900, I got a score of 4910 with an average frame rate of 117.3 frames per second. I then ran some timed render exports through Blender and when starting off with the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 7 minutes and 24 seconds to complete. Whereas when it comes to using the GPU, it was much faster taking 1 minute and 16 seconds to complete. And when rendering the BMW scene using the CPU, it took 3 minutes and 7 seconds to render, whereas it took 33 seconds, yes, that is correct, 33 seconds to render using the GPU. I then ran the latest version of Blender, Blender 4.0 and when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 5 minutes and 29 seconds to render whereas it took an astounding 53 seconds to render using the GPU. And when it comes to using the CPU to render the BMW scene through Blender 4.0, it took 2 minutes and 23 seconds to render and when using the GPU, it took 22 seconds. So I'm quite impressed with these improvements across the board. So that'll be it for today's video. Of course, if you are new around here and want to see what it's like to play games on this MacBook Pro, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in this video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.